Okay, these are crepe myrtle trees that I've been pruning for the last few years. But somebody came in here in the last couple years and has messed up my whole pruning pattern that I had. I had a pruning pattern where I tried to thin the branches so I could also have a round cr crown when I'm done. And somebody's come in here and just cut flat across the top. And what it does is it creates clusters. If you keep doing that every year, see this cluster of shoots right here? There's a whole bunch of shoots in one cluster. And right here is kind of a cluster. And the way, the way I would prune it is I would thin some of these out to start off with, and then I shorten them. And uh, you can see this one back here has just been pruned flat across the top. And this one right here has just been pruned flat across the top. I'll show you an example of a tree that's more balanced. Like over here. This one doesn't have a lot of clusters. And it's, it's more, uh, this is more evenly spaced. But I still have to prune this down a little bit more. This one's an example right here. So all these are clustered up right here. These are clustered, these are clustered. And then when you try to thin the tree out, it looks kind of jacked up when it's been done like that. So it takes about three years to fix the tree when somebody prunes it wrong. And, uh, so my pruning technique is different. Is I'm not just going to take the tree and whack it off straight like these guys did. You can kind of see on this tree right here where last year you can see where they cut here, they cut here, 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 here. You can see where they just whacked it off flat and it caused all these shoots to come out all, all on the same level. And that's the way most municipal or city groundskeepers will, will do it. They'll just whack the tree like that flat across because it's quick, it's easy, boom. I, I try to not do it that way. I try to, what I do is I'll thin out all these clusters first. Like I'll take this middle one out, I'll take this one out. Where there's a big cluster, I only want like two, at the most three. And like this one right here, this big fat cluster right here, I'll take this whole thing out. <coughs> then when I've taken them all out, then I trim the heights down of all these shoots. And I trim them down about half their height or less. And uh, crepe myrtles you can prune kind of hard because they come back, especially if you prune them in the winter. So you can prune them really hard and, and they'll come back. And even if you're not good at pruning, if you just if you whack them hard, sure they'll put it produce flowers. But I try to do it nicely. I try to make it round, and I try to thin out all these plants so you don't end up with it like this, where it's just got massive amounts of shoots in one at one level in the tree. It, uh, it messes up the way it looks, I think. And uh, I'm just gonna show you here real quick what I'm gonna do. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm opening it up first and try to get rid of some of those thick clusters and then, I'm, and then I'll go around it and, and lower all the shoots that are left. It's kind of hard to make it look nice when it's been pruned flat the previous year. It'll take me about three years to get it back to the way I had it originally. Okay, you can see on this tree right here, I opened it up first. I 
thinned it out and opened it up and got rid of the thick cluster. Then I thinned it. This tree's been pruned wrong for the last three years, so that's why it looks kind of funny, but this tree over here, they didn't do any thinning. They just cut it across the top, boom, like that. That kind of pruning doesn't require any critical thinking or decision making. All you have to do when you prune a tree like that is just whack everything off at the top. That doesn't require any thinking process. This right here, I had to make a lot of decisions. I had to decide, should I cut this branch off? Should I cut this branch off? I cut off a lot of branches to reshape the tree and get rid of the clusters. Then I, then I gave it its final trim at the top. And it, it requires more thinking because you're making decisions. You have to decide how you're going to thin it out. And when you just whack it off the top, it doesn't require any thinking. And uh, that's the way most people prune. They don't think, they just, and I call it a whack job. And that's the way most tree work is done nowadays. Trying to show you something different. If you pay attention. Okay, now this tree right here. I'm gonna thin it out, and I'm gonna open it up the way that I prune it, and you'll see when I'm all done. So, like for instance, right here, in the cluster, there's, there's one, two, three main branches. I always take the heavier. I try to take the heavier ones out because I want the lighter ones, the skinnier branches, to grow up and become the new dominant the new apical dominant branches and uh, they want the trees to be a certain height, they don't want them to get taller than they are, so I take out the heavier ones out of the cluster, like over here, here's a cluster of one, two, three, four, I'll take out this heavier one and uh, I like using these loppers, this is a Marvin head, this is an ARS pruner, ARS long reach printer, these things are nice. This is our, uh, the old, original Fred Marvin pruning head. Okay, like right here. I'll take the center one out. And, uh, so right here, I'll take out the whole heavier one right here. Right here, I've still got one, two, three. I'm going to pick out this middle one right here. So right here, you can see the way I opened up this tree. It's uh, thinned out. It's looking a lot better. And I d rounded it out. And you can see that in contrast to this tree right here. It's got full of clusters and it's clogged in the middle. And it has no really good shape to it. It just was whacked along the top. Which is the way most people do crepe myrtles. And some people may wonder why I leave some of them high. Some of those shoots, I only trim like half down. Most people trim them so they're just short little stubs. Like that long. Like two inches long. I like to leave some of mine because that's what the tree's trying to do. It's it's trying to some of those branches are trying to have achieve apical dominance. And I'm gonna go ahead and let some of them and they they flower out and it gives the tree actually when it flowers out a really nice look. Instead of the, the flat method like that, what it does is it makes all the flowering clusters cluster in the same region. So you just have this thick wad of crepe myrtle flowers all in the same region. Whereas here with a tree that's been opened up and thinned out like this, the flowering area is more evenly distributed and more asymmetrical. And the asymmetry is evened out, you know, around the whole tree, so it actually comes out to be, to look symmetrical, sort of. Uh, but it's more rounded and even, and the, the thickness of the clusters are more evenly spaced instead of just being in one area.